Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Dan Blondell from Nano One Materials. How are you today? Thank you very much, Tracy. I'm very good. Very good. It's been a great day today so far. And it would be a good day, uh, Dan, especially with all the news you've had lately. Uh, most recently, you, you announced that Nano One was granted a Taiwanese patent for your battery applications. And that sounds very exciting to me. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? Well, it's, it, there's, a, there's a couple of significant things about this. It's the third of, of, of our, our patents to be issued. We have a, a stream of them in international applications uh, in, in the U.S. Uh, and, of course, in many foreign juris jurisdictions. Uh, the Taiwanese are obviously very big in the battery space, very big battery players. So uh, it's an important uh, milestone for us to have a, a, an asset in, in Taiwan like that. Uh, secondly, uh, what's important about it is it's a battery uh, application. We're, our technology is really in the formation of the battery materials themselves. So it's a process for making battery materials. And the way our strategy is, is that we have a, we have a core technology for making the materials, and then we have, a, we have patents on the process and then on the resulting materials, and then on the application. So that's where the materials get used in the battery. And so it covers the value chain, and it's really important in any kind of IP strategy to make sure you cover um, that full range. So that's, uh, that's a really another significant um, reason for this. And, then, and I guess the third one is that uh, we continue to have patents coming out, and so it's showing a growing IP portfolio. Okay, so let me understand this correctly. You are more of a, you're a technology your patents and technology for the lithium ion battery market. Is that correct? Can you can just give us a bit of an overview about what Nano One Materials is for our investors? Yeah, so, so Nano One Materials is, uh, is a company and we're developing uh, processing technology to make lithium ion battery materials. And just so everyone knows and it's clear, a lithium ion battery material is not just lithium. Um, there's cobalt and nickel and manganese and aluminum and it depends on the flavor but there's a bunch of other materials that need to be all assembled in a very uh, in a very precise way very much down at the atomic level to create really nice crystal structures for the lithium ions to go in and out of and so we're developing that processing technology uh, to assemble those in a cost-effective way and to build a, a better structure that leads to better battery performance. Well, and speaking of structuring, uh, we were actually all online looking this up before this interview about uh, you, you utilize a process called nanostructuring. Can you tell us a little bit more about this and the industry overall? Well, nano is an often you, uh, a, a well-used word in the industry. It's used in, in, in many different places. Um, uh, maybe I should just describe kind of what we mean by it. And, and uh, so it, it really starts with what, what does nano mean? Nano is a size. A millimeter is a thousandth of a meter. A nanometer is a billionth of a meter. Uh, human hair is 70,000 nanometers wide. So it gives you a, a context of it. When we're talking about nanometers or nanostructuring, we're talking about the crystal structure within the material. So that's basically how the atoms are aligned. They get aligned. Think of it like a, think of it like a monkey bar. Uh, set and, and really lithium ions are the kids playing in the monkey bars and they go in and out during recess and they come back out and that's kind of your charging and discharging that's going on during uh, during the, uh, the the battery process and what you have to do is build a structure that effectively houses those lithium ions and lets them out during charge and discharge so the so when we talk about nano we talk about we're talking down at that scale and perfect. Obviously, uh, someone really appreciates that you know what you're talking about. You just received a very difficult uh, grant to get from the SDTC, uh, two million towards your pilot plant. Can you tell us a little bit more about the pilot plant and what's involved with that. Well, uh, on the SCTC front, we're certainly we're very uh, honored to have their support. Uh, we started work on this uh, proposal with them a year ago, and it, it was basically nine months of hard due diligence. And um, we've now kind of completed a contract. We're not even quite completed a contracting phase. We're about to kick off a, uh, a pilot plant. The money, the two point one million that they've uh, allotted and approved for us on this is going towards a piloting plant, which would be the scale up of our uh, of our technology into something that can produce maybe ten to ten kilograms a day. We may be able to do a hundred kilogram uh, allotments of material that we could use to test in in other batteries uh, in with third parties. So this would be pilot pilot plant type battery applications. Um, but the um, the key, uh, the key part of this pilot plant is to demonstrate that this, the, uh, the technology is scalable, that there's line of sight to manufacturing. The big players want to see three things. They want to see that they have technology, 
that's protected. So that's the IP, the patents. They want to see that it, it performs, that it does something in a battery special that they can differentiate with. And they want to see that there's uh, that it's scalable and cost effective. And uh, that's really what the demonstration plan here is to do, is to, is to prove the scalability in, uh, to these uh, big players. And speaking of proving scalability, I believe I saw that your stock's up 20% since the new year. What should we as shareholders anticipate in the next couple of quarters, Dan? Well, the, uh, we, we certainly, uh, we've had a lot of, uh, it's been very encouraging uh, the, the way the stock has run in the last few months. And uh, today's been a really nice day today. Uh, we, had, uh, we had a U.S. fund um, uh, take a position today and, uh, and it's led to some really exciting things. So we're starting to see, uh, see engagement um, in the market and we're starting to see individuals take, uh, take, uh, take positions. It's very encouraging for us. So in the, in the near future, in the next few months, we should probably see... Uh, obviously, more news about the the lab and about some of the materials we're working on. We're working on uh, we're working on what we call cutting edge materials, it's stuff that's in our phones today or that's going to be in our phones next year. And we're also working on materials that's really sort of a, a little bit further looking out. So we're trying to get rid of costs like cobalt and and various other things like that in the materials themselves, and go to higher voltage materials, higher density materials. So you can expect news on that trickling out as we as we uh, as we see things in the lab. You can start to see news about our team growing, advisory team. Uh, industry engagement, uh, certainly progress on the pilot itself. Uh, what else can I add to that? Of, of course, we've got other patent applications out there, so there will be more patents uh, being issued, and we'll, we'll be applying for more patents. So as those come out, we'll be uh, certainly advising our shareholders and the, and the investment community on how we're progressing on that front. So Dan, in lieu of what you're doing, and you know, you're obviously involved then with everything from cobalt, graphite, lithium, there's a lot going on out there in the industry. Is there any myths you'd like to correct? I know we have an engineer uh, that writes for us from Chattanooga that's constantly trying to correct graphite myths, for instance. Is there something about cobalt that's happening out there that you'd just like to, to tell our audience about while we have you here in front of us? Well, I, I think uh, I think I know what you're referring to, uh, Tracy, and that's uh, that really has to do with uh, the supply chain that goes into lithium-ion batteries. So there, there's a whole bunch of materials that go into there's copper and aluminum, that, which kind of carries the current back and forth. There's all the stuff in the can, but really the active materials, the stuff that stores and 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 moves lithium ions around, is is graphite on one side of the battery, and uh, on the other side, it's going to be some mixture of cobalt. Nickel, manganese, aluminum, and all of those materials have uh, have certain costs. Um, and lithium's here to stay. I don't think we're going to see any change in that. But the really the formulation of, of nickel, manganese, cobalt, aluminum, whatever is over there is is, is going to change as we go th uh, over time. And cobalt's one of those uh, one of those materials that's it's very expensive in 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 the in the mix, and it's probably one of the least produced materials out in the world. And so we expect that there's going to be supply constraints on that. And the industry is definitely looking to cut costs by removing cobalt. And we uh, we see that. We talk to the big players. And they, uh, that's one of the things they're looking for in the future. They want to see cobalt and those expensive uh, risks, uh, those expensive materials out, and uh, probably the supply chain risks out of the, uh, of the material stream as well. So that's something we're certainly working on, and you can expect some news from on, on us on that as well. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Dan. It was a real pleasure. Yeah, great. Well, thank you very much, Tracy.